Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Sevtech Ages. So we are over here at the castle in the Twilight Forest, and you will notice there's a lot of missing stuff. Uh, if you saw the update video that I posted with the last episode, I have been using the conversion wand uh, to rip all this stuff apart. And I just came back for my third batch of stuff. Currently I have used, I've actually been keeping a running total um, of this. But currently I have used 151 stacks of this block right here, Castle Brick, and among, among other blocks, but namely Castle Brick's 151 stacks um, at present. So I just came back, uh, you know, to kind of reload on some stuff, and I also had to get um, pillars and different things. And we're going to be, today's episode, we're going to be working on a lot of cleanup stuff before we start Astral Sorcery and Abyssal Craft. You know, that's the last things that I really want to hit before we move into Age two. Uh, age three and astral sorcerer has a lot of really good stuff that i was kind of waiting on getting into until we got through the exploration stuff because some of it's a little bit op for exploration and whatnot now one thing i do want to talk about just really really quick is i have one other wand here the formation wand that i've been using and basically what you can do is let's say for example what you can do is shift right click sooty marble and lock it into this wand and then what i can do is you know if i want to build out um, I can use the formation wand. Now, the way it works is it's going to build out to one block in front of you. And it doesn't build like the normal builder's wand. So, I mean, I couldn't, you know, if I had city marble laid out here, I couldn't build that, you know. It works a little bit differently, basically. Um, so, what I can do is if I wanted to maybe build, you know, say like a, a line of city marble here, I can just aim there. And I can back up a ways. I mean, you can see right there, you can see the ghost image. Right there is the cutoff point. Um, and then I can just right click and build a line of city marble and then I could you know if I popped up here um, but then I could go through and you know say do like that and build like little pillars so and um, that's the way that works just quickly cover that and the conversion wand is about the same way you shift right click to set what you want to convert all the blocks to and then just right click and convert it um, I'm not going to talk too much about that because we have covered it in that update video Okay, so today, before we go to the overworld, um, I want to go ahead and knock out three advancements while we're here in the Twilight Forest. That is the Quest Ram. I actually found one. They're pretty rare, but I did come across one. And then I want to do, what was that noise? And I see right through you. Um, now, it is worth noting that the mobs have been spawning, and the castle does have mobs. Um, the castle does, in fact, have mobs of its own. Um, I've noticed a couple... And this is this is like a new thing because they didn't they didn't used to have mobs. But let's say for example if we pop up here, which you can see a lot of the pillars are gone up through here. A lot of times they'll spawn up here, but I'm not seeing any. We'll pop down in the dungeons then. Um, because I did see a number of them down here. But there's a there's a mob, and it's like a, a cloaked person. I can't remember what they're called, but yeah, these guys right here. Adherents. Um, they'll cast spells at you. And yeah, that's about it. So they are they are spawning. There are specific mobs to the castle. So that's a step in the right direction for the mod. I'm really hoping to see this mod, you know, finished one day and the boss is implemented because this castle is really, really cool. Um, and speaking of the castle, if you recall last episode, I was kind of I don't know, the Twilight Forest Castle always kind of makes me feel a little bit down when I come here because of the fact that it's so big. And the scale is, it's a beautiful thing, it really is. And I've just never, back when I used to play vanilla, it was before I started recording, um, I used to build pretty big. Bigger than I do now, you know, because it's vanilla and you generally the world's, you know, you're in a lot longer than like a modded world. Um, but even still, I never built on the scale of Twilight Forest. By the way, I'm going to show you a little a little fun mini game you can do if you're practicing with a longsword. Something fun that you can do, and this is what I do every time I leave here. I'll find a good place that's covered in thorns, and I will try to land on these little leaves. Sometimes it's a little bit hard on the server because you have this rubber band effect, but try to land on the leaves as you come down, and it's it's really good practice for the longsword. But but anyways, I've never. In my modded stuff, I've never built on the scale of, you know, the Twilight Forest Castle. And it always makes me sad when I go there, because it's like, I want to build on that scale, you know. And, 
It always makes me sad. So last episode, I was, you know, I was talking about it. And then after last episode, I decided that we're going to go big in this series. Bigger than I've ever been, than I've ever done in a series. And it's actually, the build I'm working on is bigger than any build I've ever done in any series. And it's something that's been very, very requested. So once we get back into the overworld, I'm going to show you that. Um, as well as another project that I worked on quite a bit. But anyways, what you're looking for for the quest ram, you're looking for this rainbow looking forest. Um, it's very, very rainbow colored. And then you need to find this structure. Now this structure is not always present. You might find a rainbow forest and this is not here. This structure is fairly rare. But I will say this forest and this structure, this is the first one um, that I found in the Twilight Forest on here. So, um, But what you need to do, there's actually a dispenser right over there. And we're going to go ahead and loot that real quick. Because it it's just kind of comes in handy. It's like a little helpful boost uh, for dealing with the quest ram. We've got black wool, purple wool, gray wool, yellow wool. And the way the, the quest ram works is you have to feed him one of every single vanilla wool color. And this is, this is the questing ram right here, this big fellow. And what's going to happen is, let's say we feed him... Um, yeah, see, so he, he follows me. I'm going to bring him back over here because he's kind of wandering off right now. We'll just bring him back to his little circle. And he actually has his own trophy and everything. All right, so if we feed him gray wool, you'll notice he gets a little particle effects, and you can see a gray stripe has appeared on him. Um, and then we can feed him black wool, and there's another stripe. Purple wool, there's another stripe. Um, and then I've got this yellow wool here, which I'm going to put this in my offhand for just a second, because I want to craft up the other wools that we need. And I did bring fleece with me, because I do have uh, sheep set up in the overworld, and I'll show them to you. Um, here in just a minute. Alright, so let's go ahead and feed him these. This isn't all of them, but I'm going to keep this yellow one held just so that he stays following me. And look at that. You'll notice that he actually gets longer as he gets more and more stripes. <laughs> so he's going to be like, he's going to be pretty long once he's done. Oh, oops. Now he's not following me anymore, but that's fine. Here we go. And there we go, we got the Consummate Boss um, Advancement. And if you take a look here, we actually got a block of lapis, block of iron, block of gold. Uh, we also got the Crumble Horn and the Questing Ram Trophy. And I want to try something, actually. The Cage. Can I capture the Questing Ram and take him back? <laughs> I can. I'm going to take him back to the overworld with me so that I'll have a Questing Ram inside of our sheep building. <laughs> Just... Just so that we got him. How did that end up in here? That, like this. Oh, and by the way, in the castle, if you look in here, I've got three giant swords. I had three armor giants show up inside the castle. Like up in the, like that central room, um, in that central castle. Um, but I am going to, you know, every few episodes, I'll pop in here and show you the state of the castle because we're going to be destroying it. I mean, I'm going to be probably going through a couple castles so i will pop in here you know every you know couple episodes show you the situation with the castle so you can kind of see the castle just being torn apart um along the along uh you know as we go and everything oh and we've got the crumble horn i'll show you what that does here in just a moment i'm gonna find like some kind of little crevice or uh somewhere we can kind of get down in the earth because that's where it'll be the most effective so that you can actually see what it does it's actually a pretty cool item what the crumble horn does is it breaks down blocks into other blocks. So if I hold right click, look at that. It starts changing stone into cobblestone. Cobblestone becomes gravel. And then gravel will start breaking. And you can hear sheep buying whenever you use it. But you can see this thing does run out of durability pretty quickly. Um, and you'll notice that sometimes it does drop resource blocks. So you can get gravel. Uh, gravel and dirt, I think, are the two main ones that you're going to get. So sometimes whenever gravel gets broken down, it drops as a gravel block or it drops as a dirt block. But anyways, that advancement is done. That is, I guess, our very last trophy. Oh yeah, I need to go get another lich trophy or a lich trophy because I didn't get one the first time, but but that's fine. Um, now we need to go find ourselves a medium hollow heel and a large hollow heel. And since mobs are actually spawning in the dimensions now, uh, not a ton of them, but you know some of them are spawning. Maybe we can get the one for what was that noise and defeat a twilight wraith. Um, which is possible whenever we did the medium heal. It's possible that there was a uh, sapper down there. And I maybe killed him with the with the voodoo doll. And it didn't count for the advancement. But I know we haven't seen a wraith. I know that for a fact. 
Oh, and one thing I wanted to make note of, because this was brought up in the comments. So if you're out looking for an ore and you find gold sample, okay, um, if you have journey map, um, I don't believe this works with the antique atlas. I don't think so. But uh, what you can do is you can shift right click this gold sample. It's going to break it and turn it into a rock, but you'll notice that it just made a waypoint automatically called gold sample right there. So that's some really cool integration that I didn't realize was a thing, you know, until it was brought up in the comments. And it was Chad Stump that brought it up in the comments. So a big thank you to him because I did not even realize that that was a thing, that there was integration between the samples uh, like that. And I think it's really awesome. Okay, here's another one. We'll go in this one. By the way, I'm on the server right now with Kalahad, Trevity, and Zila Monster. Zila Monster is... I can't remember if I mentioned in the videos Red Red Rock Mountain Man. That's that's uh, Zila Monster. He is he is in fact Red Rock Mountain Man. <laughs> so I can't remember if I mentioned that or not, but it was a uh, it was a thing on the server. So now on the server we just refer to him as Red Rock Mountain Man. <laughs> After all of that, and one thing we need to do while we're here actually is these deer right here. I need to kill a couple of them. Because we need to get ourselves some venison. Like two pieces will be fine. There we go. And I really don't need cow pelts and bones. Um, we need to eat a piece of this raw venison. And did that go towards our... Yes, we had not ate that one yet. So we're four out of six on We Dine at Eternal Sundown um, at the moment. Basically the foods you have to eat is raw venison, cooked venison, uh, raw meef, meef steak... Um, hydro chops and experiment 116 or whatever. Um, you have to eat those foods. Um, but Meef Stroganoff and Maze Wafers are not on there. There's a Red Cap Sapper. This guy right here. And we got the What Was That Noise advancement. Now we're still looking for a Wraith, which spawns in the large hills, which I think, I want to say this is a large hill uh, that we're presently in. And if so, there's a chance we might run into a wraith, but we'll see. Oh, I found a charm of life. Which, if I never talked about the charms of life, basically you have a charm of life one, charm of life two, and each one is going to, if you die, it's going to restore you back to health. Um, charm of life one, I think, gives you like four or five hearts or something like that, and it gives you like some really minor buffs, um, like region one and, uh, I don't know, fire protection or something like that. Um, Charm of Life 2 restores you and gives you, like, Regen 4 or 5 or something crazy like that. Um, as well as, like, full hearts and absorption and all this, I don't know, it's crazy. Like, it's hard to die for, like, I don't know, half a minute or something like that uh, with Charm of Life 2, so. It's quite handy. Okay, I'm not seeing a Wraith here. I don't think maybe this is not, maybe this is just a medium. I don't know. I can't remember all, just on site. Which ones are which anymore? Okay, I'll tell you what. I think this one is a large one. This is a big heel. Um, so I think this one's a large. I think whenever I first come in here, like, you know, for the first time on a playthrough, I always underestimate the size of the large ones. They seem to be, I think they're, like, super big. Yeah, there we go. Maybe we'll find the wraith that we're looking for. Yeah, I see Lapis in this one. That was not present in the others. So, let's go ahead and mark it. Because these ones should have, like, diamond deposits and stuff like that. So, whenever we get access to diamonds, which I, I want to say that's, like, H5 or something like that. But I could be wrong. Oh, we got a Moonworm Queen. I want this. These things are not terribly common. So, I do want to snag that. My inventory is awesome. I have I have tons of bones, by the way. Mob Spawner has been kicking out some resources lately. But I've definitely got, like, bones and stuff like that to spare, so. But what we're really looking for is a Wraith. And this is definitely a large heal. You'll notice, I mean, this thing's massive. It's a bit of a run to each side of it. Oh, here's a Twilight Wraith Spawner. Um, as of right now, it hasn't spawned any, I don't think. Okay, there's a Wraith. This guy right here is just like a floating ghost. And there we go. We got the IC right through you. Honestly, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Oh, yeah, I've got a bunch of glowstone, though, now. 
I'll lose the dart though, I really don't need that. Yeah, and I mean they're not they're not dropping glowstone consistently enough to make it worth farming off them, I don't think, but Okay. Well anyways, that's the advancements that I wanted to knock out while we were here. So we can start heading back to the overworld now, and I can show you this build that I've been working on, as well as the build that I showed part of, like you got to see a little bit of it um, during the update video. Okay, I grabbed some meef, and I know one of the foods that we need to eat is meef. I don't know if it's raw or cooked. Ah, it's raw. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and throw these in there, though, so they can get smelting. And I'm pretty sure it's probably cooked venison is the other one that we need, I think. The venison steak. So we'll eat that. Ah, it's not. Okay, so it's probably cooked meef, then. The meef steak. Okay, well, I've got to get my hunger down. But anyways, this is the structure that I've been working on. You remember last episode, episode, I showed you this. I kind of teased it in the update video, which I've still got a little bit of work to do, um, especially on the interior, the exterior. I've still got some slight things, some detail work, um, and some some greenery, and, you know, kind of kind of bringing it in, on you know, in line with everything that's over on this side. But anyways, I did show you this this uh this building slightly um i went through and i added under brick down here that runs around um it's kind of the base layer of this and up here we have one of all 16 colors of sheep i had to use name tags on them so i actually just named them the color that they are so we have purple magenta pink and so on um, and that's due to the fact that they were despawning when i didn't have name tags on them right now i only have one of each because making name tags i just stop doing <laughs> and i've got one of each and you know it seems to do the trick for right now right over there i have a villager but uh i just set him there because i was going to set up a villager farm and then i got to building and i haven't got back on that um you know something this right here i've got to set up a timer for it it's a little bit quicker than what i would like because it's just like um i've got to set up a timer for it um but this this kind of does the trick right now but it's just a basic piston elevator like i did i made over in the tower you know on camera then once we come upstairs, this is where our house is right now. Our house is going to eventually move to the project that we're working on, I do believe. But for right now, um, it's a lot of wicker. And actually back in here, if we come around here, we have a bed. Um, and I actually have a bed now. Instead of straw and leaves or a teepee, I actually have upgraded to a full bed. Or like a, a true bed. I'm actually probably going to make this a little bit larger. Uh, maybe a double or triple bed. But for right now, it's just a single bed. Um, but right now this place is fairly barren because I got it built and I started decorating it and then I started on the next project. These stairs are not done. They're not going to be magic floating stairs. Um, just right now they are. <laughs> and then if we step upstairs, I'm going to hide my camera here. Uh, over here we've just kind of got like a little area, a little deck area that we can step up into and overlook the farm and everything. So... Um, and the roof is all a combination of mud brick and thatch. But yeah, that's what it looks like right now. I'm pretty happy with it. I was really happy with this building after I finished it. You know, I was like, man, I love this, this building. And originally I started building it up and I was like, I wanted to add that, you know, that second uh, layer up there above this layer. And then I was like, well, this is so big. It's not, it's too big for just a sheep farm. And so I was like, well, I'm going to make this a house. This is going to be like the shepherd's house. But for right now, it's going to be our house. Um... Because I quite like it. And I can actually do some stuff in there. But long term, I don't think it's going to be our house. We'll decorate it like a house. And originally, I was going to put like some trophy room stuff up there. But no, I'm not going to because it's not going to be a permanent house. I need to fix this. Um, and then that over there leads to Trevidays. I'm going to turn that into a road and add a bridge and everything. Um, but it leads over to Trevidays. So you'll see his base next episode. Next episode, episode 25, is going to be a server tour. Um, I'm thinking we'll do about every 25 episodes, which puts it about once a month, uh, which I think is fair for server tour. Server touring. Um, or, well, it's a little over a month. It's more like a month and a half, but still, you know, it gives everybody time to build and everything. Um, and then down here, I'm, I'm going to pop down here just really, really quick to show you this. Like, so if we pop right down here, look at this this like mess okay i just want to show you this mess real quick 
I'm going to have to end up coming down here and cleaning it up because there's just so much flowing liquid. It's going to be bad for the server, but like, look at this. Because this Corellium Swamp is loaded all, like, all the time. This is some kind of a hatchery filled with slime blocks. I have no clue. But it's just been, like, blown up. And there's some places where it gets really bad. I think over here. Yeah, like, look at this. It's just like a mess of blown up ground from all... That's where all the explosions are. Um, it's creepers encountering, um, you know, anti-players and anti-stuff. And they're blowing up and trying to kill the anti-stuff. And then it's causing just massive, just gouging of the earth down here. So, eventually I'm going to have to come down here. I'm going to have to clean up the Corellian Swamp in general. Light it up so nothing spawns above ground. And clean up all the flowing liquid, up, like, underground. <laughs> it's a mess down here. Okay, so anyways, for the moment we've all been waiting for, uh, something I've been really excited to show you guys. Okay, so if we pop over here, um, like I said, this is the largest build that I have ever worked on. Ever. <laughs> and I want that scale that Twilight Forest has. If we look on the map here, look at this. I have started building something. And that's why I went ahead and postponed today's, this episode, to uh, Saturday. I was wanting, I was wanting the base tour to come out on Sunday, so I was figuring there was going to be a video on either Friday or Saturday, and I went ahead and postponed it till Saturday, uh, because I was just working on this, and I kind of wanted you guys to, to get a wow factor whenever I was able to show it to you, actually have um, the outline and everything. And one thing to note, I am going to try next week to do a little bit of streaming, because... <sighs> Once I get moved, like I said, once I get moved, I will be streaming a lot more often than I am. This place is a mess. I do apologize. Once we get moved, I'm going to be streaming more often. It's mainly going to be building. It's not going to be progression streams, but it's going to be building streams. Um, I'm going to try to do some next week, but if I'm streaming and if you are watching and the neighbors start blaring music, I do apologize. There's not really anything I can do about that, technically. Um, so, but we'll hopefully be moved within like a month and then I can resume building streaming and all that fun stuff. So anyways, anyways, enough rambling. Here we go. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> this thing is, by the way, this thing, this rotunda, once the roof is on, it's going to be higher than the totems are. Um, I can't say, I was thinking it was higher in height, but I think this is a little bit higher elevation. So it may not be quite as high as the totems top to bottom but uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be big because <laughs> it's gonna have a big like it's gonna have a shallow dome roof on it so if you want to if you want to see inside <laughs> it's kind of cool we're gonna go up there in just a minute but this is what it looks like on the inside and there's levers all over you'll understand why that is in just a second but uh, it's big and I'm not even actually gonna use the space underneath for anything I'd have no intention at all to use the space on the bottom. Uh, but you could. You could live down here, but I'm not going to. So anyways, um, this is what it looks like at the moment. And it's big. It's very, very big. Like I said, the largest scale I've ever built. And the thing is, this is just the base of it. Like, these are going to be fountains eventually that come through. And there's... There's steps that go there, there's steps that go there, there's steps that go there. Um, and we'll step up through these ones. By the way, like, there's all the wall detail starting to come together. I will say I'm not going to do a ton of chisel. I, you know, I could come through here and, like, chisel and bit the outside walls and make it, like, crazy over the top. But with the scale that I'm planning on going, which I'll explain ex exactly the scale that I want to go with this, it's going to be so big. The chisels and bits would be a bad idea. Plus, with it being as large as it is, it really doesn't need the detail that chisels and bits provides because it's vanilla-style building where it's so massive um, that, you know, whole blocks work fine for detail. <laughs> so, um, it's going to be it's gonna be very, very large. Now, I will say that these sides here, this is a slightly different than this side, but this pattern runs around the entire thing. So, I'm not going to run around the entire thing on the exterior um, it's all the same as the same as that style, but uh, if we step up here, I'm gonna pop up up here so you can get a general idea of the actual scale of this. Like, look at that. It's big. It's big. And basically, this is like if you had to think of this like a house, this would be the porch <laughs> of it. This whole area, because what it's gonna be, it's gonna be. And I know I've had this request a few times, and it's a castle. 
um, is what it's going to be. But if I build a castle, I don't want to skimp on it. You know, I don't want to make like a little, you know, like small castle. I want to build a legit castle. So we're going to build a legitimate castle. <laughs> and it's probably going to go up to about build height. It's going to be large. It's going to have some attached towers that have supports that come up from the ground. I haven't added those, but the base of this is in place. This is actually going to be a big plaza area, and I'm going to set up some villagers. I'm going to breed some villagers, get some good trades maybe, um, and set up like a little trading area and maybe name tag them so that we have like vendors set up so it feels kind of lively like a mar like a bazaar, you know, um, inside the castle courtyard. And then, you know, it's going to come back, and then uh, there will be like a stable area that connects, that's under that's underground, that has an exit, um, or semi-ish semi underground um, but this is going to come back, enter into the castle, and then it's going to actually start going up and up and up and up. And originally this was going to be Astro Sorcery building, but uh, it's going to be too big to just be Astro Sorcery, for sure. Like, honestly, I could fit the entire pack into this once it's done, I hope. You know, I'm planning on it being very, very large scale. So right now it's mainly consisting of Weather Dead Rock, Sooty Marble, uh, Castle Bricks. I've also got, and these are expensive and they hurt to make. <laughs> I have middle gem blocks. Um, I have to go farm more. I only have one down here right now. But if we come through here and we come around, this is where, right over here, is where um, that set of steps connects up to. And then if we come over this area, I've spent a little bit more time working on, still taking forever. Um, this is going to come into kind of like a, a small little tower area um, that then connects over to the rotunda. And the rotunda, if we come across here, this is what I've got on the rotunda so far. Far from done, but, well, you can't really see. These are Elysio leaves, Elysio trees. Um, and then I've got Cymerite trapdoors here. And this is where I was kind of pop down and put down levers and all that stuff. Um, which I haven't done the corners here. But yeah, this is the grand rotunda. Of it's this isn't gonna be like super high. That's the roof, and it's gonna it's gonna kind of dome in um, a really shallow dome, and then that'll be it. You know, we'll do some decor along the top and some things like that, but um, or some detail work on the top. But this will actually probably the rotunda, um, as far as the architecture of it, will probably be done by next episode for the server tour. I'm betting um, some of the detail stuff will not be done. And I think I'll take this time to explain, I did some thinking, and I, I've kind of had a general idea um, as, I, as I've been building this. Now, originally, this wasn't meant to be a castle. By the way, the, right over there is an astral field. That's why I set it up here, and it was actually worked out perfectly, because if you take a look at Journey Map, like, this is where I wanted it, and this is where I found an astral field right there, so it worked out perfectly. So, but anyways, as I've been building this, I've had, like, a general idea um, for this, and I've kind of finalized my idea on the actual, like, overarching, um, and I'm sorry if you guys are tired of me rambling, but I'm almost done, almost done, um, but I've kind of, I've kind of honed in on the general overall theme of the base, and I'm going to show it to you in Journey Map because it's a little bit easier here, um, but my idea is the rotunda is actually a council room, where council is going to meet, and I'm going to set up, um, little areas, little, uh, like a table, like not, like not like a little table, like a big table. And um, this area right here where you come up between these two alico trees, and I've actually got the faces both pointing in. So this right here is where, you know, people will come and, and convey, you know, whatever they need to the council and, um, or talk to the council. And so it's kind of like a, a, a speaking, speaking area. And then the council will be sitting, you know, back here. And as of right now, the council consists of seven members seven hypothetical members <laughs> and I'm, I'm thinking about possibly doing nine like a council of nine a council of seven or a council of nine it's gonna be one or the other and this is where the whole overarching idea of the base is so we have this little district here the totem district is what i've been referring it to um, but i think the name that i've kind of decided on and a name i've actually had in the back of my mind since i started it is i'm gonna call it spirits rise like this is spirits rise okay which is totally a wow reference i'm a huge wow fan so Thunder Bluff. And I know there was actually a comment, it was funny, there was actually a comment talking about how it kind of reminded them of Thunder Bluff. And that was actually, whenever I went into it, that was um, a lot of the 
idea behind it is I wanted to kind of build a small version of Thunder Bluff <laughs> in this little section here. So this is basically the home of like shamanistic magic, shaman magic, totem magic um, up in this section. And the idea is that the council consists of the heads of these different types of magic. So this is like the home of all the shaman magic. Now over here, the Betweenlands area, um, this is actually like the druid magic. Because um, the Betweenlands stuff, you know, the alchemy and everything was kind of the druidic stuff. So this is going to be kind of where the druid magic is, the brewing, the alchemy, that kind of stuff. As well as they also are the portal keepers. So all of our portals are going to be like right over in this section. Um, now in the center here, this little area right through here, the warehouse, the tree farm, the mill, the shepherd, the farms, all this. This is like the craftsman area. So more like the center of the town um, that kind of runs up through here. They don't, they don't get a, a member of the council. They're just the craftsmen. <laughs> they kind of, they kind of uh, keep the town going. And then down in the cave, or down in the blood magic area, the chambers, um, there's actually two schools of magic that are going to be down there. And that is, first up, of course, we have the blood magi, which is like when you first enter, you have that deep chamber, and then we're going to have some attached chambers. That's where the blood magi reside. And then connected onto that, we're going to have... Uh, the ancient ones, like the the old gods, you know, abyssal craft, and I'm actually going to be doing that as a cave type build where like they've kind of been around before anybody, so they just kind of like live in these ancient caves. And there's actually a really cool idea um, that me and Wega were discussing. We're going to be doing, um, of course, Wega's base is over here, and he has a really cool blood magic area. I'll show it to you next episode during the base tour. And our idea is that we're actually going to link up because I've got, like, my blood magic area actually comes out right now. That first chamber comes out to about right here. Then I'm going to run my chambers along. And then we're going to have, um, like, right here is his base. So right in here is his blood magic area. And we're actually going to connect our blood magic areas together and then flood the tunnels and have it so you can actually row a boat down through these flooded tunnels to connect up to the different, you know, blood magic and abyssal craft area. So uh, that's currently our idea. So, two schools of magic, the Abyssal Craft and the Blood Magi, down in there. This castle, the Super Castle, is going to be home to Astral Magi, of course, Astral Sorcery, and then Mechromancy, because I don't really want, like, super tech in this build. There's not going to be any, like, factories or super over-the-top tech. I mean, I know we're going to have spaceships, and I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to make do with that, um, which I think I can fit that into Mechromancy nicely enough. Um, so Necromancers and Abyssal cr or Astral Magi are going to reside in this, as well as the Council Chambers and just like the general landmark of the town. And then lastly, as far as the Council of Seven, because we have these Shamans, the Druids, Blood Magi, Abyssal Craft, Necromancers, Astral Magi. So lastly, we have the Geomancers, which are actually going to reside in the desert. Um, this is going to connect up, go up to the desert. And that is where... Down the road, all of our auto mining is going to go. All of our mining systems, we're going to do some, you know, we'll probably, mainly for decorative purposes, but we'll have like excavators and stuff there. And then, you know, environmental tech and stuff like that. Now, I do have an idea for if I decide to implement two other schools and make it a Council of Nine instead of a Council of Seven, then my plan is we are going to possibly add an Aquamancy base off here in this section of ocean here. Um, and then possibly a pyromancy, um, molten kind of volcano-y fire jet shooting out of the, <laughs> out of the, the thing, kind of built into a volcano, um, possibly over here or possibly even maybe farther north into the desert in this section. I don't know for sure. Um, granted the desert is a little bit hotter, but I also think a molten volcano just right over here would be kind of cool too. So, um, but that is if I decide to add aquamancy and pyromancy depending on how the other builds go, and honestly, I don't have anything pressing that I'm like, mm, I should put that there. So, you know, I wouldn't, I w I'm not sure what they would actually govern if they got a build, but uh, I will say none of the other builds are going to rival this castle. This is where, this is where a lot of my life is going. <laughs> but anyways, I've, I've built up the bravery to take on something like that, because I mean, at this point, I'm really kind of just running this series as like my main thing right now. And so I'm on here enough, like, I was able to put this together uh, and build this in a fairly decent time. Like, Wega came by after I'd only been working on it for, like, 30 minutes, and he was like, oh my gosh, you did this in 30 minutes. I was like, yeah. So, I mean, it's not, it maybe won't take that long. It's going to take a long time. 
This is going to take a long time. I'm kidding myself. It's going to take a long time. Um, but anyways, I'm done rambling. Let's get back to the advancements. I am able to eat beef steak now. And that didn't count. Okay. Because I've ate Hydra Chops. It's... Well, I've ate Experiment 626. I've ate Stitch. Um, let me see. Maybe it's like Maze Wafers or something. Or Meef Stroganoff. But yeah, so the idea is just that, you know, we've got a council of manges that kind of run this town. Um, that's kind of the idea of the town. And the idea of the build and everything. Um, now, something came to my attention just now. I was getting, I was grabbing some stuff. We got the Arctic Jacket legs and hood from the dungeons. We had not gotten the boots yet. Um, so we'll go ahead and craft those just really, really quick. Um, but something came to my attention. There is um, an advancement here for wielding a fiery tour weapon while wearing at least one piece of fiery armor. We actually can't get that yet. Um, and that's because the fiery tools and weapons require blaze rods, which we don't have access to until the next age. So we're gonna have to wait to actually finish out Twilight Forest stuff until the next age, but that's fine. Um, but anyways, we need to dye this, and I'm thinking light... I'm actually thinking light blue um, is what I want to dye it, because I am going to eventually use it for like an armor stand, because I want, you know, all the Twilight Forest armor displayed and everything. Um, so let me get some light blue, which should be this indigo bush, right? That comes out to be blue. Actually, Himalayan blue poppies might actually come out to be light blue there we go okay so we'll just get ourselves a few of these instead of actually crafting light blue okay so we should be able to just add these in with the dye and we can dye them and we'll take a look and see what they look like once they're dyed but I'm thinking light blue you know it's kind of arctic looking so I think it'll be fitting and there we go we got the getting in fashion advancement and if we throw this stuff on I'll show you what this stuff looks like I actually quite like the way this stuff looks um, <laughs> look at that that's awesome um, I, I kind of wish there was cosmetic armor in this pack because there's so many good armors that I would use cosmetically like the Explorer's hat I would love to be wearing the Explorer's hat all the time um, but sadly no no cosmetic armor but and I am still working on all this cleanup stuff I mean I literally spent almost an entire day working on that building right there so and I'm not gonna just focus on the castle I'm still gonna be cleaning up all this stuff that building hopefully this weekend okay I'm still waiting on the food I'm just kind of running my hunger down um, but let's go ahead and do clean up on the rest of the stuff I want to go ahead and make a market for starters but then once we get the cleanup done we can pretty much focus on astral sorcery and abyssal craft after that so That'll be good. This is actually fairly easy to make. We just need to get ourselves some red dye, which I have a massive amount of. There was something, I can't remember exactly what it was that I was crafting, but I was needing a bunch of it. And we can get ourselves our market at long last. And we got the market advancement. And um, I'm going to set this up just right over here for right now. It's going to probably get moved to the castle once I have a floor. Da -da -da -da. Weathered salesperson. I love the way they come into being. You can actually kill them too if you want, but um, but anyways, the market basically what we can do is we can buy items. So it requires 24 monolith stone for Shogoth flesh, bone meal. It's a gold ingot. Gold ingots. It's normally emeralds, but it's changed to gold in this pack since emeralds are so late into the pack. But I think most of everything that we that's in here we already have. So it's kind of well, I don't think I have tiger wood, and I may or may not have hop seed. And that's out in Redwood. I don't have Redwood. I know I don't have Redwood. So I know where some Redwood is because it's over near Severed Space. But I know roughly where it's at anyways. And then there's the chunk load of the Weirding Gadget. There's an advancement for that. Five blocks of gold and Ender Pearl and three gold ingots. Which I should be able to round this stuff up. No problem. A lot of gold, but it's really not that expensive. Ender Dust. There we go. And let's go ahead and eat this Meef Stroganoff. Hopefully this is what we need. And it's not. Okay, well, maybe it's a maze wafer. I okay, and then we can get ourselves our weirding gadget. So there's that. And we got the top 10 weirdest gadgets. So everything in Age 2 is now done except for training with coal. Age 1 is still all done. And then we just have to cover strainers real quick. Just to be all caught up and ready to go for Age 3. Now, as far as where I want to put this thing, I actually have no clue. 
because I don't I don't really have anything that I feel like I need chunk loaded. I'm gonna throw it down here just because I know a lot of people use the sugarcane farm. Um, they're living nearby and myself included and we'll just stick the weird and gadget down right there and what that's gonna do is it's gonna keep a three by three area loaded so if we take a look right here um, uh, let's actually move it up to right here in fact so it's gonna keep this area right here loaded and it's the majority of the farm and honestly the farm that people in this area use a lot of is sugarcane uh, cotton and hemp so it's gonna keep that stuff loaded and uh, keep that stuff growing, even if I'm not online, so it should always be grown. Okay, and then we need to get ourselves a strainer put together. So for the advancement, we need to get a strainer base and a dense survivalist strainer. Okay. By the way, if you need string, fleece is the way to go because you get four per fleece. It's one nice thing about having that uh, animal farm, like right there, or the sheep farm, you know. So the best part about it is because like you have tons of strain. There is our strainer base. Um, and then they want us to make the dense survivalist strainer. This one right here that takes iron bars, iron... Wait, really? <laughs> make sure to check them out. You'll need to craft the strainer base and a dense survivalist strainer. Seriously? Oh, this one right here. Um, sticks around a dense gnat. Okay, well that I can do. I can do the, the other one too, but I was like, wait a second, they want iron in the first age? But no. No, they actually don't. Okay, so dense gnat. There's two of those. And then the dense survivalist strainer. We're going to need some sticks. I've got 22 stacks of sticks at the moment. Um, that's mainly due to the fact that I've been running that a lot, but then I've also been chopping down a lot of trees, clearing out for the castle. So... Um, we'll grab, I guess, one of those. And that's going to pop the advancement. There we go. This is getting strenuous. And we have now 100%ed the tutorial age again. <laughs> okay, now if we take a look here, though, let's actually talk about these. Each one of these has its own loot table. So if we hit U, the standard, or the standard survivalist strainer, yeah. And I believe the dense one, oh, no, it's different. Okay, the standard one, we have all the different wood, stone, clay, sticks, Solid Survival Strainer um, is the same stuff, except it's a little bit more efficient and has more uses. Then we have the Dense Survivalist Strainer, which is how we get shark teeth, ink sacks, sand, dark gravel. And then we have the Dense version, which is the same thing, but it's 10% more efficient. Then the Fisherman Strainer, which you have to get bait uh, for that. But that's how you get like fish, lily pads, all that stuff. Yeah, we'll just set it up with the Dense one. There's honestly not much from the strainers that I actually need at the moment i mean clay and stuff like that it's so much easier and quicker i mean i guess this is a good way to get passive but honestly this i think this will be the one that i want to use just for getting like sand and ink sacks you know i use them a bit more what we'll do is we'll set it up down here because i'm actually planning on having like a little strainer uh, area I, I don't know i don't know if i want it here or if i want it down at the docks Let's set it here for right now, um, and then I'll, I might make some adjustments to it, you know, as we go. We'll see. Um, but basically what we're going to do is this block right here, we're going to break this, and we're going to set our strainer down right there, um, and then this thing has a, a space for a strainer slot. It also has space for a bait or bait pot, um, and bait is used for the fisherman strainer. And I'll talk about bait in just a second, but if we put that in the strainer slot, um, it's going to start running and it's going to start collecting. Well, it's, once I set this up, basically all I need to do now is break this block and let water flow through this and past it. And it's going to start running. Okay, it's going to take a second. There we go. We got our first item. We got a piece of sand. I mean, it's going to take a while before it, you know, generates much of anything. Um, in all the mods, they were buffed up to where they produced a bit faster because you needed them so much like early game in all the mods but oh we got speed three i was like whoa what's going on but then if you want to get bait what we're going to do is make the garden trowel has a chance to drop bait by digging dirt and this thing's also actually a fairly decent shovel for early game so dirt flint and a stick and then we'll go ahead and craft up our garden trowel there we go, and we can just go through and we can dig dirt, and there's a chance that, I just saw one actually, we're going to get worms as we dig dirt with this. So this stuff needs to go anyways. 
I'm going to gather up just a few worms here so that we have them for bait, uh, for catching ourselves some fish. There are other systems for auto fishing in this pack. Um, there is, there's a gnat, the auto gnat, right? There's the auto, I know there's these, the fish traps from Primal Core, um, that you can use. But then there's also, a, I saw it from a trader. It may not actually be available. I want to say maybe it was the, I think it was the cyclic one. It's the one, it's an automatic fishing net where you give it a fishing pole and it will automatically fish for you. And it's influenced by enchantments and stuff like that. I think it, I want to say it's from Cyclic. I noticed a villager, I was looking at villagers uh, like yesterday, and I noticed that it was in here too. So I mean there's a lot of different methods for auto fishing. This is just one of many. This is actually a really good shovel because it has a lot of durability. <laughs> and for like age zero, uh, it makes for a very good shovel. Okay, let's pop over here and there's a couple things that we're going to want to make. I'm going to make another strainer. And then in addition, we are going to want to make a bait pot um, as well. This thing, it basically just makes your bait more efficient. You can see right here that has a 50% chance to not consume bait whenever there's a bait pot in there. Um, it does have limited uses at 128 uses. Oh, and I've got some hunger. Let's eat a maze wafer. There we go. We dine at Eternal Sundown. I love those ones that have like the really big fanfare uh, whenever they pop. Okay, so there is, no, not dense net, and standard net. There's our bait pot. So we've got some bait. We've got a bait pot. Uh, we've got a strainer base, and then we're going to need a fisherman strainer. This thing never breaks. Um, basically, it just denotes that this strainer is fishing. Um, and then it's just sugarcane or swamp raid around a net. Oh, and since it's raining, you want to see something really, really funny? This is this is actually really cool. I think um, I know some people might find it annoying, but I find it really awesome So if we pop over here to this building, you'll notice the the roof is mud brick and thatch This is something really neat about the between lands. It actually rains through the thatch Which makes sense. I mean it's thatch, right? But it doesn't rain through the mud brick so it was funny because originally I had my bed I was had my bed up here and It was like if I step off to the left I get rained on. If I step off to the right, I get rained on. But my bed is like totally dry because it's right underneath a mud brick roof. So, <laughs> um, you can actually see, and it's honestly kind of a cool little visual effect. You can actually see rain back in behind there. It's not, you know, it's not present in any of this, but there is rain back underneath there that's kind of coming through. I thought that was kind of nifty anyways, that, that it rains through the thatch like that. Okay, so anyways, let's get our fishermen strainer and we'll get this thing set up real quick and I will say we'll probably end up covering at some point we'll probably cover the other fishing uh, methods that you can do and when it speed three hits and the, <laughs> the camera zooms out like that okay so our strainer base goes down and then we're gonna go ahead and put our fisherman strainer right there and you can see it says bait required the strainer requires bait we're gonna put our bait pot in and our bait and there we go that's what that one looks like um, which is actually kind of cool because it's it's pretty accurate. You know, the fish swims in and then they get like stuck inside of there um, because of the, the way the current is flowing. Um, but anyways, this thing's going to start fishing now and it's going to start catching fish for us. And this one means that we can get these things, which bones, sticks, bowls, all that stuff's not so useful. Honestly, fish, I've been getting so much from Guardians. So, which I will say, um, we're going to be doing one on camera. But I've actually killed all three of the Elder Guardians at the, uh, back over here at the Guardian area. Um, the one that we originally found, there's like 50 million Guardian things though. But I actually killed them because I was just farming Guardians and I was like, I'm tired of mining fatigue. I swam down there, I broke a brick right above each Guardian because they're always in like the same three spots. And I just went ahead and killed all three Elder Guardians so that... Um, we wouldn't have mining fatigue in that area. Plus, I've been silk touch mining sea lanterns. Um, so that's why I killed the third one, because I need sea lanterns for over there. Um, but if we take a look inside of this strainer, you can see we've gotten a few shark teeth. Sadly, we haven't gotten any ink sacs. That's one of the things I would really like to have. But um, it wouldn't be any effort, really, to build a squid farm. So we could always do that. But you can see the fisherman strainer um, bait pot is where we're actually using durability with this one. And you can see we've caught raw fish and clownfish. But anyways, I know it's about wrapping up point for this episode. Next episode, like I said, is going to be a server tour. It's going to be out on Sunday. 
Um, and it's just going to be going around looking at everybody's bases. I will say, I mean, there's a lot of people on the server. Um, we will be looking at everybody's base except for Josh just started tonight. So he's kind of passed on having a base tour because he doesn't even have a base yet. Um, and then I'm not for sure. I've got to look around. I'm still looking for Zex Sugan's base. Um, he has he actually hasn't been on um, in the past like five days, which I know he gets busy a lot of times during the week and everything. Um, so I'm hoping that he hops on. I know he doesn't exactly even know where his base is, like as far as coordinates or anything like that. So I've got to see if I can maybe find him. Um, but I think other than that, I think I have everybody's base marked at the moment. And I know most of the people in the South have, they're connected up to, you know, astral teleportation, which we'll be doing, we'll be connecting ours up uh, next week. So uh, next week is going to be astral sorcery, abyssal craft, and then possibly hit H3 if we get all that stuff done. But we'll just see where we get to. But anyway, so... I hope you guys join me for next episode. I will say that there is a lot of really awesome builds on the server right now. Like, really awesome builds. So I hope you guys join me for that. Um, once again, just like in all the mods, I mean, we have a lot of just heavy builders going. <laughs> so, so I hope you guys join me for next episode, for checking all of that out. And I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I know I rambled a little bit talking about um, the base. I mean, like I said, this is more of like a cleanup episode and just kind of going over... Um, some house working, um, some house cleaning stuff and um, give you guys, because I know some people are actually interested in the theme of the base, the lore of the base, the idea behind what's going on here. So I wanted to kind of give you guys an update on all of that. Let you guys check out what I'm working on here. Like I said, next week I'm going to try to get in um, at least a bit of time, you know, a few times during the week streaming. So if there's a little bit of noise from downstairs, I do apologize once again. There's not anything I can really do about that. But I will say before I leave, I'm going to play drums on the floor before we leave. But anyways, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button. Go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And if you guys have any questions or anything or comments or suggestions on the base, or um, if you have an idea for how I could implement or what I would implement into a pyromancy or aquamancy build, <laughs> I mean, I guess I could have like a big fishing center. I don't know. I've got, I've, I've got a couple little ideas, but nothing I'm sold on at the moment. But anyways, I'm, I'm either going to do a council of seven or a council of nine. It has to be one of the other. It has to be an odd number, so who knows. But, you know, if you guys have any comments, suggestions, ideas, um, let me know down in the comments. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.